Welcome to Math 432. I am Professor Asaf, and this is Applied Combinatorics. Before we get down to business, let's talk about what the business of this class is. What is combinatorics? Um, Giancarlo Rota, who is a professor at MIT, um, he is considered the father of modern combinatorics, and he's the one who really made it a rigorous mathematical discipline and showed the power and the beauty of combinatorics. He once wrote, combinatorics is an honest subject. You count balls in boxes and either you have the right number or you haven't. What he meant by that is a couple things. First of all, we literally are going to have a bunch of boxes. Into these boxes, we will place balls. We will do it in lots of different ways and we will count how many ways we can do it, okay? That makes combinatorics a concrete subject. It's something that you can just get your hands busy with and you can play with. And what I'm going to encourage you to do throughout the class is to do examples. Most of combinatorics, you can gain insights and intuition by the examples that you do. So when faced with a problem, the first thing you should do is start to draw a picture or construct an example of it. Okay? So the first principle that we're going to learn in combinatorics is one of the simplest and most powerful. This is something that I know that you've had experience with um, because everybody has experience with this, I think, at some point in life. This is called the pigeonhole principle. Um, the pigeonhole principle. And like most things in this class, I'm going to explain it to you first um, in terms of balls and boxes. Okay, so the pigeonhole principle says that we are going to put balls into boxes. And all it says is that if we're going to put K balls, let's maybe switch colors. If we're going to place K balls into N boxes, and if we know that the number of balls is bigger than the number of boxes, what can we conclude? Well, there's a very simple fact. At least one box, maybe more than one, but at least one box has at least two balls. So whenever you're faced with a statement like this, maybe it's intuitively obvious. Be careful if it is, a lot of obvious things are false. Um, so let's just do an example. Here we have three boxes, okay? So our N is three. We have four balls, hopefully you can see them all. So K is four. So we just check, is K bigger than N? Yes, we have four balls and we have three boxes, so we can do the pigeonhole principle. So the pigeonhole principle says, no matter how I put these balls into these boxes, at least one of the boxes has at least two balls. And it's sort of obvious when you look at it, right? Like, okay, well, what am I going to do? Well, I can, I mean, there's, there's, I got a ball here. I've got to do something. I could actually put all the balls into one box. And now it's true that at least one box has at least two balls. In fact, this box has four balls. I could also do this. Now there are two boxes that have at least two balls. That is still a true statement. The point is that there's no way I can do it so that I don't have at least one box with at least two balls. So whenever we have a statement like this, um, that's sort of painfully obvious, intuitively, like we're like, yes, how could that possibly be false? The strategy that we're gonna use to prove it is going to be contradiction. So our first lesson, I guess, is combinatorics is concrete. Let's do some examples. When we have an obvious statement like the pigeonhole principle, we're gonna prove it by contradiction. So here's the statement written once again. Um, if we place K balls into N boxes, and k is bigger than n, we have more balls than we have boxes, then at least one box has at least two balls. How are we going to prove this? So a lot of what we're going to be doing in this class is learning techniques of proofs. Our proofs are generally going to be simple. They're not going to be the delta epsilon proofs that you've encountered if you've taken 425. And they're not going to be um, the more algebraic proofs either that you see if you've taken 410. Our proofs are going to be generally quite simple and use simple techniques. Um, although they're often going to require some powerful insight, but we'll develop intuition for that. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to suppose not. When something is so obvious that it just has to be true, suppose it's false. Okay, what does that mean to say suppose not? Not what? Well, not means I say the conclusion is false. Okay, so I keep the hypotheses and I change my conclusion to be the opposite of what's written. So here I get k greater than n and this is going to be balls, k, and this is going to be boxes, n. So I'm going to do this, and no box has greater than or equal to two balls. That's what it would mean to be not, okay? 
at least one becomes no box, has at least two balls. So no box has at least two balls. Well, what does that mean? Well, that tells me that each box has less than or equal to one ball, right? So that would be a situation like this. So what does that mean? Well, let's just count. It's combinatorics. It all comes down to counting. So what does that mean? That means that the number of boxes that we have, the number of, well, let's do it this way, the number of balls that we have is at most one ball, each box has less than or equal to one ball. So the number of balls that I have is no bigger than the number of boxes, right? Because every box has at most one ball, right? Each box has at most one ball. So that means that the number of balls is less than or equal to the number of boxes. But the number of balls, this is what we're calling K. The number of boxes is this is what we're calling N. That means that K is less than or equal to N. But our hypothesis was that K was bigger than N. This is a contradiction. Usually we denote it like this. So here is a contradiction. If you arrive at a contradiction, two statements that cannot simultaneously be true, then your supposition is false. So it's not true that not is the case. Therefore, it is true that the pigeonhole principle is the case. So this is a great example of a proof by contradiction for something, a statement that's pretty obvious. So what we'll do in the next couple of videos um, to reinforce this idea of the pigeonhole principle is we're going to look at examples and real world applications. How do you know when the pigeonhole principle is what you should be using and how do we use it to solve problems?